UFC 259 is a can't-miss fight card for MMA fans. Three title fights with many intriguing storylines. At the top of the bill, perhaps the most electric fighter in the sport, middleweight champion Israel, the last stylebender Adesanya, will attempt to become the fifth fighter in company history to hold two belts simultaneously. But he'll have to go through Polish buzzsaw and light heavyweight champion Jan Blachowicz to do so. No easy task. In the co-main event, the greatest female fighter to ever enter the octagon, Amanda Nunes, will look to defend her featherweight strap against Megan Anderson. Nunes has been seen as high as a 20 to 1, but is currently over a 10 to 1 favorite in this fight. That alone tells you how dominant she has been of late. And in a potential classic, Russian phenom Pyotr Jan will defend his bantamweight title for the first time against a blazing hot Aljamain Sterling. UFC 259 is upon us, and three belts are up for grabs. Who will enhance their legacies, or perhaps pull off an upset? We're gonna find out on Saturday night. We are super excited about this one. Let's welcome in one half of the Morning Combat podcast, Brian Campbell, also Hall of Famer, the champ, Rashad Evans. We are breaking down UFC 259. As we heard Luke say there, fantastic storylines headed into this one, maybe better than the past two fights. Uh, so let's start with Jan, excuse me, Jan Bohovic uh, and Israel Adesanya. So Adesanya here is really looking to make history, capture two titles. Yes, he would be the fifth fighter in UFC history to do it simultaneously, but the first to do it undefeated. And keep in mind, he's only been fighting under UFC for three years. Rashad, break down this fight for us, but then also give us your pick. This is going to be a great fight. You know, uh, Adesanya is going up in weight class, and he has a very challenging way to, way, uh, fight ahead of him against Jan because Jan is, is not what people would have expected to be the champion. People thought Dom was going to win, but what, what Jan has shown is that he has power and he has precision to land that power shot almost whenever he wants to. And, and that's the thing with Jan that a lot of people really don't give him enough credit for is that Polish power. That Polish power is something else. And that's something that really Izzy has never really felt that kind of power in someone that big. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But at the same time, you have Israel Adesanya, who has just been masterful inside the octagon, being able to switch on whatever stance he wants to, being able to do whatever he wants to do inside the octagon. This guy is truly a video game. And that's why my pick is going to be with Israel. I think Israel is going to continue to do what he does. And, you know, keep this fight at a range where he can maintain and not get caught with Blahowitz sneaky right uppercut or that sneaky left hook that he likes to land with a lot of power. My pick is Izzy. I got to stand with you on this one, Rashad, and go with the odds makers here. Speed kills and it also thrills. And you have to look at that advantage that Adesanya is going to bring to the table in that middleweight frame, raising up in weight just a bit. But his advantages in speed and technique are going to be large in this one. Obviously, the thing about Blahowitz is the power. Also, a little bit awkward and sneaky in how he gets off his lead right uppercut, which was a big punch that got him to where he is today. I think, though, along with that speed, the difference is that Adesanya is just a wizard and a master at setting up his strikes through very odd fainting and constant movement. This has a lot of potential to confuse and really make Blahowitz look bad. You see why the odds makers like Adesanya. He's that great. We may be looking back at this as seeing a hot knife through butter. There is big potential here for Adesanya to finish him and do it spectacularly. Let's go to Amanda Nunes and Megan Anderson in the women's featherweight title fight. BC, you had Megan on your podcast, and you guys talked a little bit actually about betting. Uh, she said she has to be reminded about the plus and minuses, which is probably good because these odds are insane. Amanda Nunes minus 1,100. As of right now, it could potentially change. Uh, but you also say this is a great spot for Anderson to pull off an upset. So BC, can she pull off that upset? That's the tough part about it. It's one thing to frame it like I did, saying, look, there's no good time to fight two division champion Amanda Nunes. They call her the GOAT for a reason. But is now the most opportune time for Anderson if she is going to slide in under the radar and do this. Here's what's in her favor. She's no blown up bantamweight. She's six feet tall. She hits hard. She's a legitimate featherweight. And when you mix that with Nunes, little bit... um. 
what's the word? A little inactive, just once in the last 15 months. Also had the birth of her first child with her wife, uh, Nina Ansarov, a UFC strawweight. But we've also seen Nunes for the first time in the past year openly talk about an end date and retirement. Is this the right time to surprise her? You can really ask yourself that because the last two fights, yes, Amanda Nunes won dominantly. Both title defenses went the decision though. That only happened two times in her previous 18 fights. Amanda Nunes is a finisher. If you believe she's slowing down just a bit, there's certainly with the odds, uh, you know, a shot in the dark here at a live dog in Megan Harrison, who's big, has big power, like I mentioned. But you want to know why Nunes gets the betting odds so large in her favor? Because she has become a sure thing during this ridiculous win streak. You still have to go with Amanda. I like Megan to surprise people just a bit. That may not make you the money. Maybe a good story in the end, though. Yeah, BC, I totally agree. You know, I think that Megan Anderson does come in here with some very promising things on her side, being the fact that she does have a pretty sizable advantage and the fact that she really wants this fight and she's really pushing for that being in this dog, the dog position. But at the same time, like you said, you know, having a kid it does something for fighters. You know, sometimes it motivates them, that motivation that they need, but sometimes it's that down, downward throttling that, that can happen once you get a kid and once you start thinking about life, life differently and life outside the cage. You know, one thing that made um, Amanda Nunes so tough is just the fact that, you know, she's just, you know, saw through her competition. And part of that is because of the fact that her focus was on another level. Does this child take away some of her focus or does it sharpen it? We'll, we'll have to find that out on Saturday night. But at the same time, it leaves a great opportunity for Megan Anderson, Megan Anderson to go in there and make an upset happen. But I mean, she, she's up against a, a really, you know, tall, tall mountain here against uh, Nunes. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. And, and her appearance is out. Even in fights where she was going to decisions, she still managed to go in there and look dominant in there. Um, has she slowed down a bit? I would say so. But her slowdown is still in trajectory to get the win over Megan Anderson. BC mentioned that height difference there. Anderson six feet compared to Nunez is five eight. Maybe it'll be a factor. Maybe not at all. All right. Piotr Jan, Aljamain Sterling, the bantamweight title fight. Uh, this one's basically a pick em. We get Jan defending his title. Sterling, I, I love this because this is the chance he's been waiting for since Henry Cejudo retired last year. He wanted in that title fight, didn't get it. Now he gets his chance. He says Jan's just been fighting a bunch of old men and now has to prove himself. Rashad, we'll start with you yet again. Your pick to win here. Well, Aljamain is right. I mean, Jan, Jan has, you know, been fighting some guys who are who, who are uh, well past their prime, and, and uh, Sterling was speaking, you know, really well on that. Here, here's the thing about it. You know, with Sterling, you know, he he's moved camps, and now he's, you know, growing into this position where he's he's become a leader. You know, he's become a leader at, at Extreme Couture's, and, and he's really, you know, started to um, start to really you know, round out his skill set and believe in himself on another level. And with a guy like Al Jermaine who's feeling himself, you know, that's a very dangerous combination that we've seen Corey Sandhagen found out in his last opportunity out against Al Jermaine Sterling. But that's the kind of Al Jermaine that we can respect. An Al Jermaine who's surging, an Al Jermaine who believes in himself. And Peter Yan is very powerful, very dynamic, and very well-rounded in every single aspect. But I still like Al Jermaine in this fight. I think Al is going to pull off the upset and uh, become champion. I like Aljamain. Well, Rashad, as we know, looking at those betting odds, there's no right guess, or no no incorrect guess, excuse me, in this case, because it is a virtual pick -em. one of the best fights the UFC could make on paper. Something obviously has to separate them. Look, if you don't know how good Aljamain Sterling is, just watch that Sanhagen fight Rashad mentioned. Went in there and just, what, a, 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 under a minute, it seemed, just dominated Sanhagen, got him down and submitted him. It's not as if that could not be in play here. Aljamain is a great wrestler. He can ent exit a fight on the ground, has great skills. The question is, can he strike with Piotr Jan for five rounds if needed? I'll tell you the best prediction I can give you. This one's going the distance and it's going to be a thriller. Back and forth seesaw affair. And if it ends up being that, I think Piotr Jan has too many weapons on the feet. He's a destructive finisher. He's got a great gas tank. He just keeps coming. I think the judges are going to end up being split. I like Jan to defend, though, in what is an incredible division. Two peak fighters right now. Let the best man win. I like Jan by a hair, but this one is a pick em. All right, great fights, three title fights there. Give me quickly, though, BC, we'll start with you, your best bet for UFC 259. 
look, this fight card's so loaded, you can go deep in that undercard and pick out, you know, some really good fights. How about this flyweight, basically number one contender fight here, Askar Askarov going in there against multi-time challenger Joseph Benavidez. Benavidez, guys, is fresh off of two destructive, dismantling losses to current champion Davidson Figueredo. It was looked at to be his last stand. Even though the betting odds are close in this one, Askar Askarov is a rising threat in this division. He comes out of the wrestling-hungry region of Dagestan in Russia. We know the reputation of those fighters, but he's also a skilled striker on the feet. I think the odds may be giving Benavidez a little bit of respect because of the name, but this is going to be Askarov's time to shine here. He's a slight favorite. I think he's going to be the next title challenger. Yeah, with this phenomenal card, it was very hard to pick that one fight, but I did. I picked Song Yedong, and I really like Song Yedong. You know, this Bantamweight has tremendous power, tremendous timing, and he's 21 years old. With that youth, with that edge, and moving and surging how he is in the Bantamweight division, he makes a pretty compelling case to be a top contender in the weight class, provided he gets a big win on Saturday night. And I'm picking that he gets a big win on Saturday night with that big power to boot. Guys, I love your enthusiasm. I am so pumped up for this. I think it is going to be fun. Sit back, relax, set aside your Saturday night. It's going to be fantastic. Brian Campbell and Rashad Evans, thanks so much for joining us here. You can hear much more from these guys. Also, Luke Thomas of the Morning Combat Podcast. He mentioned they have that uh, interview earlier in the week with Megan Anderson, also breaking down all of the storylines for UFC 259. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.